Welcome folks! Today I want to start a really cool new series that's going to walk us through how to create a scorecard. Now when I say scorecard, specifically I mean how to create a dashboard or report in Power BI that contains a combination of numbers, values, KPIs that might be symbols to be indicative of certain types of trends or patterns, and things like sparklines and other mini charts as well. I found that recently I was actually building one of these for a demo, and a couple of ideas came across, and I thought I would make a video series to share this. I'm actually going to split this up into a few videos because there's a few things that we'll be doing through the course of this, um, so we'll talk about what we'll uh, be breaking these things up into as well during each of those videos once we hop into Power BI. Now what we have in front of us here is the scorecard that I've created. I ended up coming out with this template on my own, figuring out a series of, of cards, informations, and visuals. And what I really want to do is walk you through how to create this and share that information with you. The goal of this scorecard is to provide store information. That could be store, that could be country, that could be any information you want. The goal being is you have a primary slice or a toggle to select from that then breaks out the values. Now each of these rows in here is attached to a metric. Specifically in this case, there's sales amount, return amount for the percentage, same with forecast and budget variances. And the goal with this video is going to be showing you how to make a couple of these rows, which will give you the tools needed to build out the rest on your own. As I mentioned, I will be splitting this into about three videos to make sure that it's easy and digestible for you to use per video. So to start with, in this first video, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through this top portion right here. And more specifically, I'll show you how to do the sales amount metric name card, the store rank, the total value, and the monthly average and the latest months. So those real, really those first uh, series of numbers and everything at the top. For the second video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create that KPI card that you see next to the latest month, as well as how to add that custom spark line. And then for the third video, if you come down to this return amount percentage row, or the forecast amount percentage or any of those, I'm gonna show you how to make cards that can show you instead a value assigned to a color depending on the state or the status that it has, as well as that arrow KPI. And between the two of those, that will give you the tools needed to create those cards. And then in the final fourth video, I'm going to show you how to add the visual polish to create the colors that you see here, the, the title cards that you have at the top, the line dividers all around it as well, and then over on the left, that filter section to really add that additional polish and shine to make this report look really good. All right, with that being said, let's get started. All right, got a brand new Power BI desktop file open. I've actually created a second tab that is going to have our final scorecard example, just kind of like a picture of it, so I'll continue to refer to this as I build it out. Now one thing that I want to note, since this is more of an advanced video, I'm not going to go too much into the concepts of the whys and the hows with writing the DAX. I'm going to show you the formulas that I use, but uh, that's about as far as I will go in terms of depth of that, instead of explaining the concepts. With the goal being that this is more about the design and the functionality and the output, rather than the fundamentals. All right, now to start with, I want to go ahead and create that card that is going to let me show that like nice centered metric name that we see at the top. As an example, let's start with sales amount that's up here. So I'm going to go to this, and one thing that I do want to mention, now in general, you could go ahead and use a text box, but one thing that I've found that's a little difficult with those, you find that right up here, um, it's hard to get them to stay centered and aligned that way. Uh, they, they'll do left align and you can kind of put a carriage return in to help get them in there, but it's a little harder to get them perfectly dead center. So I've actually instead created a DAX measure that simply returns the title and then that becomes my card. So I'm actually gonna come over here, I'm gonna right click and select new DAX measure. This is gonna be called sales amount text. And it's just simply going to be sales amount. Beautiful. Now I can take that and drag that onto my canvas. And then I'm going to come over here, move that uh, to the side a bit, and I'm going to select card. There we are. Now you can see that it's going to show up right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of formatting things to get that kind of aligned to what I want to see. So the first one, go to that paint roller, 
turn off category label. There we are. Turn on background. Let's give it a nice splash of color. Beautiful. Yeah, get rid of that transparency. And for now, let's go ahead and give that a white data label and maybe make that a little bit smaller. Let's say size 20. Perfect. Now, one thing that if you don't have it turned on that I always like to mention in my videos, you might notice that it's snapping quite a bit. That can be found over here under the view and turning on snap objects to grid right there. All right. With this up here, the next thing I'm going to want to do, come back over to final scorecard example, up here at the top, the store rank, I want to go ahead and create that. Now that's going to be kind of a two-step DAX process. I want to both get the rank of sales amount against other stores, of course, and then as well, I would like to get the uh, concatenation of this with that total value at the end. So the first thing I'm going to do is copy this card to save a little bit of work. Control C, Control V. There you are, and do two things. Toggle off the background. Change that category label to maybe a darker gray color. And I said the, this will be a couple step process with DAX. So to start with, I'm going to go over to here to fields, right click, new measure. I'm going to call this sales amount rank, and that's going to be equals rank X. And now the table itself needs to be all stores. Store name, store name right there. And that's making sure that it's ranking whatever we select against all stores. And then the expression itself, which will be sales amount. Perfect. And now I can go ahead and drag this into the fields. Now it's gonna be one at the moment, but let's just check this. Let's go ahead and look for store name under the fields list. Make a quick and dirty slicer over here at the moment. There we are. Bring this over here. There we go. Now you can see that it's returning the store name. Or the, uh, I should say the, rest uh, the store rank that we want. So that's part one that we need in this thing. Now we still want it to be formatted a little bit. So I need a couple of other calculations. So to start with, what I want to do is I want to be able to grab the total count of all the stores that exist in here. So I'm going to come up, I'm going to select new measure. I'm going to call this store count all because I'm going to use the all function and this is going to be equals calculate distinct count of store name. So I want the distinct count of those and I also want to make sure that it ignores any filters on the store name as well. So that's going to be all store name as well. That way if the store name is ever filtered to that slicer, it still returns that correct all up number. Hit enter. Perfect. Now quickly put that into my card. Yep. And see what's 299 number of stores that I have. And as you can see, that's not being filtered. There we go. So that's exactly what I want to show. And I'm going to concatenate these. Let me bring that out a little bit. Put rank back in there oh, on the card. There we go. Drag rank into that. Now I can create a third calculation. This will be new measure. This is going to go be called store rank formatted. Or actually, let's call it text. It's going to be that and concatenate. And that will be the first thing, which will be sales not rank. And the second text, which will be actually, let's do three parts because I need a middle rank and then I want a uh, space in the middle of another space right there and then and and store count all so there you go so it's going to be the number of and then the total number beautiful now let's go ahead and put this on our card and see what we get there you go 30 of 299 now as you click through this you get the rank for the sales amount Awesome. Now the next card is going to be pretty easy. If we come back to our scorecard example, we can see that that's simply the total value right there. So to do that, let's come back to our scorecard. Let's uh, copy pasta our little card here again, put that over here. And now this simply is just going to be that sales amount brought right into there. Now the formatting is rounding. I don't like how much Power BI does that by default. So I'm going to come over to format, data label, and I'm going to change that from auto to none. There we go, now it's just gonna show the total number as I would like it to. 
Now, continuing down to two last examples that we'll go over in this video, which is going to be the monthly average and the latest month. So let's go ahead and start with the monthly average. Go back to scorecard here. Copy and paste. Now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select new. This is going to be called sales average, sales monthly average. And we're going to use the X function here. So that will be equals average X. Now I want to do this by month. So I'm going to use a function called values, which will give me a distinct list of my calendar month and year. So it's going to average X over every single calendar month. So the average of say January, February, March, April, May, and that's going to give me a monthly average. And then the expression itself is sales amount. Perfect. So now sales monthly average can come onto this card and let's go ahead and format that a little bit, change that to currency. Perfect. There we are. Now the last card that I want to make coming back to our example again, I want to make the latest month, meaning I want to grab the sales from whatever latest sales month there was. So this will be another two part DAX calculation. Go back to scorecard. Copy paste one more time. Perfect. I'm going to come over here. Now the first step that I need to do is I need to figure out, because I'm going to use this for multiple calculations, what is my max sales month? So I'm going to select new. And it's going to be called max sales month equals calculate max. And that's going to be calendar month and year. Perfect. And then filter because I want to look at every single month in the calendar and then return the latest that had a sales amount. So filter all calendar table, there we are, and where there is sales amount. Close parentheses, close parentheses. That's step one. Awesome. Now we can go to new calculation here, filter, create the new one, and this is gonna be called latest sales amount. And that's going to be calculate sales amount. That's going to be filter on the calendar table. And in here, month and year, calendar month and year equals max sales month. So it's calculating the sales amount only for those values that match, that have the month and year that are matching the latest sales month. All right. Latest sales amount, drag it into fields. And we need a little bit of formatting right here. So come up to format, currency, general, and set that to zero decimals. There we have it. All right, we've gotten our first four cards down, our title, our rank. And if you're wondering yet why we have them with the titles at the top, I will do that in a little bit. Um, to As part of the last video, that, that will be the, the formatting section that we'll do. But just know that uh, that's the structure that each of these rows is gonna follow. Then we have our rank, we have our total amount, our average uh, say per month amount, plus our latest. And to wrap this up, like I mentioned, in our next video, in part two, I'm going to show us how to do these KPIs over here, and then as well add that really cool spark line. So I will see you then. If you liked this video, please make sure to like or subscribe, and have a great day.